This morning, former DG Greg Dyke talked to Andrew Marr about the developing scandal. Well, I think the BBC made uh, two early mistakes. First of all, the anything I said or wanted, it was most likely what Barry said and wanted too, and that he would almost certainly back me up. They started saying that the the, the Newsnight programme wasn't running for editorial reasons, wasn't run for editorial reasons. You needed to explain mm. what exactly they were. Exactly what that was. Exactly yeah. what. Why did the editor of Newsnight decide this wasn't a strong enough programme to be broadcast? Mm. Now, I suspect he didn't think that the evidence was strong enough, but he needed, or someone needed to say that, mm. and nobody did. Hardly ever a crossword, you see. Very, 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 very few. I'm not very involved. I've still got friends there. Mm -hmm. Um, but I took the decision when I left to walk away. And I don't criticise. And occasionally I help out Mark Thompson when he needs a bit of support. I think one of the problems the BBC has got today is a bit short of friends. Uh, and every so often I try and be a friend because I'm a supporter. I personally felt that the doctor's speech about facing his greed and his fears... Do you mean me? It was really nonsense, you know. Well, everything we know and have learnt in the years since shows that the Gilligan story was fundamentally right. That the government did sex up the case for war. If you read the appendices to the Butler report, I mean, Butler was a wise old bird. He didn't want the Prime Minister, he didn't want to bring down the Prime Minister, so he stuck all the interesting stuff in the appendices, which the journalists don't read. <laughs> But if you read those appendices, it's quite clear he came to the conclusion that the dossiers supporting the case for war were PR documents. We are all apt to surrender ourselves to domination.